Guys, Jackie M from Arsenal Summer Legend Cuisine, how are you doing? Have you missed us, actually? We haven't actually streamed for, I guess, I think about a week now. But welcome to uh, kind of like a, a, a special broadcast here. We've got the two guys from South Africa back with us. I know some of you missed them. So make sure you say hello and let us know where you're watching from. Say hello to the guys. And, uh, of course, we're talking about Liam Ghani, our Penang transplant in in well, near Cape Town at least anyway in South Africa we've got Paul Gray our co-founder of Masters of Malaysian Cuisine he's over near Johannesburg so two guys from different parts of South Africa they come together and they do these cook-alongs uh, like I said make sure you say hello and let us know where you're watching from but before we get the guys uh, to talk to us let's play a quick clip from Tourism Malaysia we'll be back in 30 seconds All right, guys, welcome back. And I think Liam's dropped out. Just hang on a second. Let me bring him back on the camera. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. I swiped what I shouldn't have done, and it all went off. <laughs> Technology, huh, you guys? All right, so what are we making today, guys? <laughs> ah, okay. So today, this is this is a tribute to Paul's greatest Malaysian food obsession, Chakwe Kiao. So we're <laughs> going to be expanding his world a little bit today. So we're going to be making a Thai um, patsiyu, which is basically like a chaho fun. I, I don't know how else to describe it. It's actually almost quite on Thai. It's it's very Chinese influenced, um, but delicious. So yeah, I mean, this is going to be a really good lunch. I'm very excited for lunch today. Cool, cool. We have got uh, Debbie, our MOMC Nyonya expert, saying hello, watching from Subang. Awesome, Debbie. Hi, and we have Mick Tan, one of our giveaway Hi. winners. How are you, Mick? Thanks for tuning in from Penang. Uh, guys, you know, if you're wondering why <laughs> parts to you, I, I like to describe because a lot of people don't realize, in fact, I grew up in the southern part of Malaysia and my version of chakwitya, my exposure to chakwitya was one version and people who have been to the northern part of Malaysia and Penang have a different idea of what chakwitya means. So nowadays when I cook chakwitya and I meet people and I have to explain the difference, I basically kind of say, and this is going to annoy everybody I know, it's going to offend everyone, but I kind of tell people the difference between Penang chakwitya and the chakwitya I grew up eating, which is kind of like Suramban, which is kind of like pseudo Malacca, pseudo KL version, the darker version. I tell people the Penang Chak with you is kind of like Pad Thai in appearance, okay, not in flavor. And my Chak with you is kind of like Pad CU in appearance kind of thing. Um, so I think some people will actually admit to that. Enkun, yeah, another winner of our competition. How are you doing, Enkun? Uh, watching from Wollongong. Um, all right, guys, so these two fellas are going to attempt essentially a Thai part CU, which, like I said, for all intents and purposes, is kind of like the Thai version of the char kway teow I grew up eating. So it's dark, it uses the flat, wide noodle. Uh, have I got it right so far, Liam? Yes, no, definitely. Although to co to compare um, Penang Kway Chow to Pad Thai, I just had to, I just had to remove myself from the screen for a second there. <laughs> So I'm going to associate it with such blasphemy. Ah. Anyway, well, there we go. Really, it looks the same. That's why people always like ask for part Thai when they come and order food from me. Um, yeah. Raffles, yeah. Raffles, well, Raffles, is that how you pronounce Raffles? Yeah, <laughs> Raffles, yeah. Sorry, I'm butchering your name. <laughs> how are you doing? Watching from Putrajaya. Great to have you. And Paul Lee, watching uh, from San Diego, California. Great to have you. Guys, don't forget to share this around. And if you want this recipe, sign up malaysianchefs.com slash join today. And I'm sure eventually we'll get around to having the PDF for you to access. Uh, by the way, guys, if you sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash join today, you will get in your email inbox, keep an eye out for it, a special code that allows you to access our membership area with all our recipes for free. But we are going to cut it off very soon, okay? So sign up now or forever hold your peace because after that, you're going to have to pay. You're not going to just pay uh, one, one off. 
you're going to pay forever. Okay, you're going to have to pay us every month to access all because we put a lot of work into creating all this content for you. Anyway, um, all right, guys. Uh, Rosita saying hello from uh, from Germany. How you doing, Rosita? Good to see you. All right, guys. I'm going to leave you two alone and uh, let you add it because I'm going to. Uh, just be taking up valuable space on camera. So good luck, guys, and I'll catch you guys later. Cool. Cheers. Thanks, Becky. Cheers. Bye. Hi, everybody. Right. Now Jackie's gone, we can get on with the show. <laughs> okay. So as I said, Paul loves Chao Kui Chow. So this is going to be interesting. As Jackie said, Chao Kui Chow is not one dish. So it's, it's perfectly appropriate that that Thailand also has something very similar, and I think this is about as close as we're going to get. So, but yeah, it's it's standalone dish, really delicious, and it's quick, it's easy, and also the ingredients are actually very very accessible, which is fantastic. Um, often with Thai food and Malaysian food, you look at the recipe if you live overseas, you think never, can't do it. But this is a great dish if you want a nice authentic flavor, and yeah, but it's going to get hot in here. Just so you know, it's going <laughs> to get very hot. We've got our full burners. Going on, going on full tilt. So, so Paul, are you ready to start? Yes, finally. In hey, an look at that <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just marinate our beef. Uh, it doesn't have to marinate for long. Uh, just for we're just going to marinate it for as long as we are going to do the prep work, which will be about five ten minutes. So, first things first. I plan to okay. actually use these cameras the other way around, but so be it. I guess this is not how it's <laughs> meant to be. Uh, does that fit well? No, it doesn't. Okay, well, you That's can better. see me cutting the meat at least. Okay, cool. That's better. Okay, cool. Okay, so first things first. I, I don't have a second camera, so I'm just going to have to put up with me moving my camera up and down. I try not to do anything <laughs> too catastrophic. <laughs> okay, so... <clears throat> Obviously, now this is a beef dish, so we're using a bit of steak. Firstly, um, you don't want that much meat in it. Uh, you want enough, you've got to think of portion. So you know you're not going to throw a whole steak in this dish because you want it to cook fast, oh. you want it to cook hot, and the more sorry, Paul, <laughs> <laughs> and the more um, meat that you have, the, the harder it is to get the wok hay and the heat back up again. So I'm using about 100 grams worth of. Uh, I'm using rum. I don't know what Paul's using. I'm using, because it said flank, I got sort of a chuck cut, which is quite nice oh, okay, nice. and sort of fatty. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Very nice. Okay. So, so, and it was from Woolworths. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Fancy. Yeah. <laughs> 85 okay. rand a kilogram fancy. Ooh. Okay. Right. Uh, Paul's certainly having a very expensive lunch today then. <laughs> Oh. But yeah, so again, um, fatty fatty beef is a good one, definitely. Uh, you don't want anything too lean. Um, so what we're going to mix it in, very simple. We've got a little bit of um, vegetable oil. We've got a little bit of dark soy sauce. We've got a little bit of um, tapioca powder or corn flour. Or, or you can also use potato starches too, any thickening agent. And we've got a little pinch of salt. So all we're going to do is get our beef. Okay, so I'm going to cut my beef across the grain, and I'm just going to cut it in half first. And now again, you've got to think of you know, eat, what, how you're going to eat this. You're going to be eating with chopsticks, so you don't want anything too small, too fiddly. Also, so I, think, I think nice thin in, strips instead of the salt. Grain. Instead of salt, I mean it is CKT, so uh, <laughs> okay, uh, the enough. tar version thereof. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there, there's a bit of an obsession with, with chicken powder. It's fantastic, though. It does make a big difference. So I'm just going to cut this nice and thin. Okay. Go. My second piece. So I'll bring my marinade on camera now. Okay. Uh, Okay, so I'm just going to make sure my pieces are separated out. It's always good to do because often when you cut things, the sinew and the meat doesn't always separate and you want it to fry nicely and as individual pieces. Yeah. But then I'm just going to boil. Okay, 
So I'm just going to throw my beef into a mixing bowl like that. And first things first, I'm going to add my heart to the floor. Uh, Liam? Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 you just disappeared off camera. <laughs> oh, did I? Sorry, sorry. sorry. So I've added, no, no, so no, I've no, added... no, I think it was Jackie just moving me. <laughs> uh, okay, so we've got some vegetable oil. We're going to add our um, corn flour. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of salt as well. Okay. Side. I'm just going to give this little bit of a mix. Don't have to get too fret. Don't have to fret about it too much. Just make sure all the meat is coated in the sauce. And again, you want it. It mustn't be too wet. The marinade. You want to keep it quite dry because remember we're going to fry this off. Um, so we don't want this. We don't want it to actually boil in the marinade. So really, just coat it, and then we're done. So. There we go. Got my beef. Cool. I'm inside. just cutting the beef. Okay, we'll just wait for Paul. Almost there. <sighs> See, I have everyone who's watched this before. But I, I'm, I'm the chronic prepper. Paul's the fly-by lunch. <laughs> See if it lands. Does it live? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Paul spends his entire morning before these doing things, so I have no time yeah, to. Yeah, uh, I, I live. Uh, people who don't know, I live in a very small village in rural South Africa, so my days are not filled with exciting things like Paul's are. Um, <laughs> the exciting most exciting thing things. was that wandered past my house this morning, <laughs> and we have a Paul black, we have a black sheep. Some sheep. I'm so excited. We have a black huh. sheep. Oh, bless. I immediately was like, oh, I love you already. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little fella. I know. Oh, less. <laughs> <sighs> I was going to say, but I would choose that simple life any day over the hustle and bustle of busy cities. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you know what? There's always there's pros and cons. There. Pros and cons to everything. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> But then again, but I'm not complaining. You know, I'm not complaining. You know, Love it. Like I said, I'd, I'd rather wake up to seeing a mountain in front of me than wake up to seeing my neighbor trying to start his car at 6 a.m. in the morning. So <laughs> we we just get broken down tractors instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Paul is going all out with his beef. I think you may have to have a little bit more marinade. Um, you, yes, but also, not all of the steak is going to be used for this. <laughs> ah, okay. I'm going to make uh, another hi, portion. Hi, hi. Did you notice later. Annie's having Annie's having apron envy? Not mine. It's a, it terribly <laughs> not mine. I don't know why no one wants my and apron. It's, but and, it's, like and it's not the one that I'm wearing either, because this is the, the, basically a misprint. Because the one that you're getting is the one from this printed in. Well, no, you aren't getting, unfortunately. But the people who are getting. Um, are getting from KL or Sydney, depending Ooh. on where you're from. So those ones look a lot better than this, with this weird little black behind the <laughs> Murphy logo. Never yeah, use so that prints again. Weird little <laughs> holes in our stomach that it gives us. These little black holes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on this guy. <laughs> uh, but if you like Paul's apron, yeah, and if you and if you entered our competition, there'll be one coming your way if you want it. Very exciting. <laughs> How cool okay. would that be, though? Just to get a package that you want in the post. Ah, oh, it would make your day. It really would. Or it may, it would make my day. <laughs> I've won many a competition in my life, so I'm kind of really? used to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's just not fair. I think I've like won twice hmm. in my life. And, and they're usually competitions I didn't remember entering. Entering. <laughs> I think <laughs> grand prizes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we're making the sauce, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah. So, sauce, next stage. So, Paul's got his. So, let me just show you what we've got. So let me just pull this down again. Oh, you okay. can see Paul in socks and slops, damn it. I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, 
Sauce, very straightforward. We've got mm -hmm. a bit of oyster sauce for richness. We've got a little bit of dark soy again, and a little bit of um, light soy sauce. Got a, a bit of um, fish sauce, some white pepper, brown white pepper, and a little bit of sugar. Now, Paul doesn't eat sugar, so he's not Very having all the sugar. What, what so it was that still last that sweetness through the um, oyster sauce. That will that will give it a little bit of sweetness. Um, so the other stuff too, aside from the sauce ingredients that we've got, the other items you're going to be adding. Very very simple. We've got some garlic, some Asian greens. I'm using bok choy, but if you don't have Asian greens, you can use all sorts of things. Um, you can eat, you can use tender stem broccoli if you like. You can use some really nice hard chard if you if you want that as well. Um, also two eggs. So that's what we've got. So we're just going to mix our sauces in. Okay. A little tip: if you are mixing um, sugar into a sauce, sometimes it's, it is actually better to use a little bit of caster sugar. Simply because caster sugar dissolves much easier. Uh, often the problem with a lot of sauces when you make them is the sugar doesn't actually dissolve. So you've got to give it a really good stir. And also just before you use it, give it another stir before that, after that as well. So my sauce. Now, this should actually be enough for, I would say, two portions. Um, you don't want to put too much sauce in. Again, you almost want just the noodles to take on the color and the flavor, but not be entirely saturated in them. Um, remember, this is a fried dish. Okay, so we've got our sauce over there, got our beef over here. Mm -hmm. okay. Actually, I should bring out, I should bring out a, a xylitol brand called, we'll pretend that's sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you would have to convince us all. That would have to be one hard camp campaign. <laughs> You'd be surprised. My marketing yeah. skills are, you know, average. Oh, I could pepper. probably pull up something. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of pepper. <laughs> okay. Um, Paul's going to be sir. very peppery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you probably want to use about half a teaspoon for the two portions. <laughs> I'm not that's sure how much Paul is. <laughs> No, that wasn't. Uh, maybe it just it looked really powdery or something, but that was not even half a teaspoon. <laughs> okay, good. I think that's okay. just you. Coffee. Yeah. I have to say, unlike black pepper, which generally you can use a lot of, white pepper is very fragrant and too much of it can totally ruin a dish. It can be amazing, but it's one of those things you just want a hint of, not really to be, you know, you wouldn't make like a white pepper sauce necessarily. You would use black pepper. I can't see. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Okay, so Paul's got his sauce okay. done. The last, the mm. last thing we're going to do is so with these noodles, there's no, there's, there's no too much spice in these noodles, so, which it sounds very on Thai. I know we always associate Thai food with very, very spicy food. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to um, chop up some chilies and some garlic. Um, last of all, we've got some coriander, which he told me he always has coriander. Mm -hmm. Which, which makes him better stock than me. So all we're going to do is we're just going to chop those things up finely and add them to a, about an eighth of a cup worth of rice vinegar and a little bit, a little touch of um, fish sauce as well. So that will just be our, our condiment on the side. And what works really nicely actually is the, the acidity of the vinegar really cuts through the, the dish quite nicely because it's actually quite a rich dish. Um, again, yeah, because you've got velvety beef, you've got velvety noodles, you've got some nice eggs in there. So just having that little little tartness really does just elevate it. So what we've got here, so I'm using a mixture of chilies. I've got uh, one hotter little red chili, and I've got classic green chili as well, which again, I always say, is, this one came from my garden. This one, look at it. How awesome is that? Okay. Um, got I've also got chilies. As well. Yeah. Oh. I've also got chilies from my garden, although, yeah, I actually haven't even looked. I should actually go have a look. <laughs> you should. No, there's nothing more yeah. satisfying than growing your own chilies. I mean, wow. Yeah. Okay, okay, so if see, you have got... coriander as well, you would chop that up and you would add this, add it as well. The coriander just gives it a really nice fragrance, which um, I must say, I wish I had some coriander on hand. That's the next thing I'm planting. 
<laughs> I keep I keep running out of coriander. I think I, I should actually stop listening to myself. We had we had good coriander, and then it just started to get very thin, and then it died. So. Oh yeah. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you said, but with the Chinese broccoli, what are you replacing it with? Or do you have Chinese I'm, broccoli? I'm just using bok choy for mine. Okay. I've got spinach and bok choy. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. No, and oh, any oh, leafy vegetable, um, like I said, preferably something that's a little bit robust, but um, it doesn't have to get. If you're using English spinach or English-style spinach, baby spinach, um, you may just want to add that right at the end. Um, you may not want to fry it first initially. Um, I'm just adding... Hi, Suan. Hi. Thank you for Hey. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm just going to add it fresh. Okay, so I'm just going to chop up my chilies. Rather than slice them. And I'll just put this here. So that uh, Liam. Uh, uh, so I can have coriander and <laughs> on this yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. oh, wait. Uh, I'm actually so working on a I'm new. Go ahead. Sorry? No, so, they, so the way I'm chopping my chilies is to get that mm -hmm. dice. I'm basically running the knife along it on both sides which will give me like a little um flour and you just okay. hold it together and you find dice that way it's just much easier than cutting it up and then doing it um, and again if you don't have um red and green chilies it's not here or there you can use iron it's not it's not a problem um, okay let's go put my knife through it quickly Okay, then I'm just gonna dice I'm just gonna finely dice my garlic cloves. Now with this, all you have to do is just run your knife along a couple of times and then make slits going the other way, and then when you cut it, you'll end up with some nice even sized pieces. Okay. Okay. That and just run it do one more time. Okay. Now, let's see if I can get this into my bowl without it going everywhere. <laughs> let's just put that. So I'm just adding it to my uh, Chinese, my uh, white rice rice vinegar. I always find that really hard to say. White rice vinegar. I don't know what it is. It's a bit of a tongue twister. W, w R W or V. But, it, you know, basically, <laughs> it's a bugger. You should never put W's is. and R's it near really each other. Is. And I seem to have a bit of a selective lisp sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sort of comes and goes. That's like I've got selective dyslexia. I don't know what it is. And it usually comes down to passwords. Whenever I'm typing in a password, somehow... You know, some letter that was in the front is at the back, and some letter that's at the back is in the front. I <laughs> know, uh, oh don't worry. I, I must say, I try once whenever I try to use my password, and like, no, I'm just going to reset it. I'm so bad <laughs> okay, at I've had it. <laughs> okay. That's my last so, yeah, thing. We're going to add a little, my little bit of um, fish sauce as well. So, not much, just a bit, just to add just a few drops, probably about a teaspoon's worth. So, that's mine done, all ready to go. Oh, can't really see it. So I'm just gonna put that to one side for the moment. Now that can sit for quite a while. Um, again, the longer it sits in the vinegar, the more it will firstly pickle the chilies and the other ingredients, the garlic. And also it will also flavor the oil, the, the, it will also flavor the vinegar as well. So it does benefit from being left alone just for a little while. It doesn't have to be long, but long and just enough. Um, okay. cool. uh, how much vinegar just so that it coats it basically 
Uh, no, you want it as more like almost like a dipping sauce. So you want it okay. to be quite runny because you want to actually pour the vinegar over the noodles. Um, so for, uh, for one portion, two portions, I would probably say an eighth of a cup or a quarter of a cup of vinegar. So quite a bit. Um, but yeah, you want it. Let me just see if I can show you what my looks like. Uh, so if the thing didn't it's pour out so slowly. <laughs> okay, so. Mine is kind of like that. Okay. Mm, there it is. What do you think? That looks about right. Perfect. Perfect. It's, I was gonna say it's, it's hard to tell with the yellow bowl. <laughs> it is. And have you got that? Have you got your? Well, now now you can add your coriander, which I have to say actually okay. really makes. Should I put in there as well? Oh, it does it. Okay. If you want to, don't worry about if, uh, if there's some stalks in it. That also works really well because it's actually really fine. It's also the flavor it's got, It is. It's got such a nice much, crunch to it. Yeah, how much coriander and are we looking I at? I would probably say about a tablespoon's worth should suffice. Okay. Um, yes, I'm putting a little bit away. <laughs> I mean, again, you can add as much as you want as so long as there is enough vinegar to have that same viscosity that you want it to have. Um, but yeah, you can add it. More, more garlic, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's purely your own taste. You, you can add as much as you want as he hears the doot, doot, doot of a truck <laughs> reversing in. <laughs> <laughs> a really nice and cool. fine. I would go over it one more time. One more time. Okay. Go on. Do it one more time. Let me just blow the coriander that I probably should not have held up off of the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. It's in the keys. Uh, there we go. Oh, no. I didn't turn anything off. <laughs> oh, I got it. I no, got we're, it. Still, we're still here. So no technical disaster averted. <laughs> I haven't got Liam's luck <laughs> when it comes to the tech side of stuff. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm the worst techie person out, really. I, I realize my, my mind just allows me to remember and figure out as much as I need. Anything else is just extraneous. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, well. And especially when you have a much older partner, like I do. My partner's 20 years older than me. And I'm forever being asked, how, does, how do you do this on WhatsApp? This? How do you do this? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> You're like you're it's asking the wrong one. person. <laughs> uh, okay. Right. Next thing. So, as you can see, Paul's got some eggs. So we're just gonna we're just going to get our eggs and we're going to beat them. I got these from the chicken this morning. No, I'm joking. Fantastic. I don't live in the village. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we're just going to pack in our eggs. <laughs> I got them from the chicken that is spa this morning. <laughs> I I have to say I I am ashamed of myself. I feel like I should be having freshly laid eggs, but I I haven't got chickens yet, so I haven't quite moved on to that stage. We're giving you, we're giving, we're giving you one season, one season, <laughs> and you have to have <laughs> chickens. All my own projects. Going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna put that aside. If you make it self-sustainable enough, we can like come start a hippie commune over there. <laughs> so then, so that's done. So next thing we've got garlic. Okay, so we're just going to finally chop the garlic as well. So again, just going to slice through it and then cut it along. Now, this one, you just want a fine dice, but not too fine. Again, remember, you're going to be cooking at a very high heat, and you just want to make sure that it's not so small that it burns too quickly, um, which is always actually, for me, whenever one's making a fried noodle dish like this, I find that not burning the garlic is the trickiest part of the whole dish. That, that's where you got to move fast. <laughs> you really do. You've, everything has got to be ready, which actually just brings me on to my next point, 
So when you, whenever you're making any dish like this, um, whether it be chao kui chow, whether it be this, um, fried rice, anything that requires fast action, fast cooking, make sure that you've prepped everything beforehand. Like if you go to a hawker stall in Malaysia or Thailand or Singapore, everything is ready. Everything is chopped. Everything is within easy reach. Well, and that's how little, you make this rice. There's little buckets next to the wok, then you know. <laughs> There are. <laughs> okay. So let's we'll take this. Right there. Yes, I'm afraid where, many it uh, has been ruined. Liam, a little bit of boiling. Liam, where were the eggs supposed to go? I feel like I might have just made a mistake. <laughs> the eggs. The eggs yes. are got, just like Tapway Chow, the eggs are just going to be added in once we fried it off a bit and then we're going to fold them in. Why? What have you done? <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason I went and cracked them into the vinegar mixture. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> you know what? It, 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 it's, I was going to say it's fixable. You know what I'm going to do? I'll chuck the eggs in afterwards. Uh, you know, you like with it. the eggs regularly. No, 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 no. Don't worry. I'll, I'll chuck the eggs in and it's just going to be more of the... The vinegary taste. I'll make some more of it afterwards as well. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. This is cooking with Paul. He's got his own way. <laughs> He's determined to start his own Asian kitchen cuisine. <laughs> All I need is a small country to back me. <laughs> Precisely, Maybe yes. I, I don't know. Someone, with, someone with dodgy food that like is desperate for like some new cuisine. Or some so in the island in Indonesia. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to have all my things ready. So, now again, okay. just think about the process you're going to cook this in. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fry off our beef, take the beef out mm -hmm. and keep it to one side. Then we're going to add a bit more oil, um, fry off our garlic and our greens, um, if you're using powder greens. Then we're going to add our rice noodles, which I'll show you what my rice noodles look like. Here, so these are my rice noodles. I've just pre-boiled them and given them a little bit of coated, coated oil on top of it. That's just helps stopping them getting too plain. Um, and then basically, so we're gonna fry that off and then we're gonna add the eggs and the sauce and that's it, we're done, we'll be done. Um, so let me just quickly go up. So if you pre-boiled your noodle, um, sometimes it's a good idea just to refresh them with a little bit of hot water beforehand. Just make sure that you drain it. Um, again, you don't want a wet noodle because anything that um, takes away the heat from the wok is going to be detrimental to the flavor at the end. So just bear with me one second. Everyone keep an eye on Paul and make sure he doesn't uh, do anything he wasn't meant to do. Okay. So I've just rinsed this under some hot water and I'm just gonna let it drip. Just gonna leave the colander in the bowl just to get that little bit of excess liquid out. Okay. Now, if you can, obviously I'm using dry noodles. I'm assuming Paul's using the same as well because um, yeah, I'm getting dry noodles um, outside uh, in South Africa. So, but it's fine. I think so long as you actually read the packet, make sure you get the, the texture that you want it to have. Um, then you'll be good. It's not, not a problem. Obviously, fresh is always best, but at a push, you know, if you use um, dried ingredients and correctly, you're still going to get an awesome meal. So, but I mean, you can try making them yourself as well. If you're feeling particularly industrious, um, I've never had any I success. See, I saw the recipe linked in this article, and I wanted to. Get, I was tempted to give it a try, but I ran out of time this morning. Uh, no, it, it's a, it's quite laborious. More, it's not difficult to make, but it, you need a steamer. That's the big thing. So I've tried it in the microwave. That never works out for me in the microwave. But I think that's just a hack too far for me. Um, but you need a steamer that also you can you can put multiple layers in. Because otherwise, you know, you're really steaming stuff for ten minutes or however long it takes to set for about. Four, four chopsticks worth of noodles. <laughs> so, you know, you want to be able to do it on mass if you can. But by all means, try it. It really does work. And uh, there's some great recipes. Jackie's got some brilliant ones on her website. 
if you ever want to check it out and you feel like you just want to give it a little bit more, you know, a bit more personal touch. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, a lot of water from my noodles. I can see it's good. Right. Yeah, let me okay. get my noodles out of the water. <laughs> and I still don't know what remedy the eggs are. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, oh dear me. Jackie, why did you disappear? You're meant to be keeping an eye on him. Where's the fun in oh, my <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. I can't be watching this thinking, oh my goodness, what's he done now? <laughs> oh, actually, <laughs> I was focused on uh, <laughs> other stuff, so I missed out on that, but I'm sure it'll work oh, out. Well, Paul's, Paul's put his, mixed his eggs with his vinegar anyway, so we'll see. So let me just put this down yeah, for the walk. I can, I can read from the comments. Everyone's Good. kind of wrong. Yeah. I was gonna say the reason those comments are on screen is because Jackie put them there, so <laughs> she saw that it happened. Okay, so let's see. This is the first time I've said well, the first time I've used my wok on this um, portable gas cooker. So we'll see how this goes. It's the first time I'm also okay. using this portable gas cooker. So okay. let's hope for the best. Now I'm actually quite curious in how this goes because uh, I was telling you earlier on my cooker, it doesn't quite get hot enough. Whereas I think this little gas that I've got is pretty fierce. This is what you want. You do not you want to try to get it as hot as possible. So we're just going to let this heat up a bit. Uh, let me first figure out how it works. Okay, I'm assuming. Okay, actually, let's just move you for a second. Okay, gas bottle. Okay. Connected. Oh, already you can see the smoke coming off my wall. <laughs> yep, that's not right. Come on, how exciting does this look? How awesome. Okay, I think I'm only ever gonna be cook I'm only ever gonna fry noodles now. Like this. <laughs> Unless it all ends up in a fireball at the end, then don't do it. But so far, it's going well. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of oil. As you can see, my wok is letting off a lot of smoke. Again, I don't want too much oil, just a couple of teaspoons. Okay, I'm going to swirl it around a bit. Nice pot. Then, the first thing to go in. Now, it will caramelize very quickly, so, which is fine, which is kind of what you want, but we're just going to pull that in. But just make sure you give the, all the pieces a little bit of space. The closer the meat is to each other, the more it's going to steam rather than fry. So, okay. Over. Okay. Let that fry for a bit. Now, obviously, if you are inclined to want to have uh, your beef very well done, then do so, but it's not really necessary. You're actually really just searing it. Okay. Okay. Sorry, there's always one stubborn piece that doesn't want to flip over. Okay, that's my piece done. Okay, so I'm just adding it back into the marinade bowl. It's fine, absolutely no problem, because remember, we're going to be adding a little bit later through so it will cook through again. So Paul, how, where are you at? Just turn the walk oh. on and wait for it. Oh, there we go. There's some smoke. Um, <laughs> some smoke? You should be. You should check mine. Bloody hell. <laughs> I'm just going to turn yeah, it down. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. going. Okay, then that sounds good. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I, I turn my walk off just because I'm doing it in tandem with Paul. Um, and also, you don't want to let go, um, because we fried the beef in there, there's now a lot of sugar and there's a lot of um, salt in there and beef rendering. So if you let your wok carry off too hot, it's going to start burning. So I'm going to switch mine off, let it cool down for a second, I'll get it back nice and hot in a second. All right, I see the camera's not online. I'll say. There we go. Hey, that's Liam's uh, mandatory offer comp for the day. I know, there you go. I slipped it in there. <laughs> Lacquer. <laughs> that is one word I can't bring myself to say. Yeah. Lacquer. lacquer. I think there were too, when I first moved here, there were too many ads which somehow use lacquer as a word. I don't know. And it just it grates on me. I try not to say it. Um, but it means good or great, by the way. In many, many forms. Good, great, tasty, delightful. Anything. <laughs> Anything. Anything. Anything positive. Uh, actually, this cooker is not as hot as the other stove. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. What brand? Oh, so, I, uh, I think it depends on what brand you I think I just lucked out on uh, oh, my. Oh, mine's faulty. <laughs> mine's, <laughs> don't my luck. Mine's faulty and the, the gas I regulation is like way off. <laughs> I was going to say, um, you're lucky inspectors don't come around in South Africa. <laughs> no, true. Yeah. We, have, we have a lot of freedom in South Africa to do things to ourselves. <laughs> we, yeah, we're not we're much like of a nanny. America. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's South Africa. You have that spot to be you're stupid enough to do, to do it that is on your own head. Yeah. yeah. Don't blame anyone else. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm moving it across the other side. I've had enough of this. <laughs> oh no, it's a dud. It's not a dud, oh, but it's, it's a like very, it's a very industrial looking one as well. Yeah, maybe I'm just not. I haven't figured out the little turning levery thing or whatever. But uh, for another time. <laughs> oh well, shame. It was a one-off purchase. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's, it's, it's useful for a couple of things. I mean, when I go camping one of these days. Will be uh, helpful. Precisely. You're not going to be. That was one of the first thoughts too. You're not cooking wok dishes <laughs> when you're camping. Well, I don't. Well, I mean. that was what I was thinking. Oh wow! If I go stay somewhere, I can actually just, like make stuff <laughs> If I go camping, I can make stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like you're going to get my life in the Yeah. Beef is done. Okay. okay. So I'm going to put mine back on. Okay. Get back to some crying. Okay. I can't remember the order of things now. Mind. So we're just going to let our box get back up. As I said, it's this always is important. Gonna... If you if you make more than one portion of this, it's always. I mean, if you're feeding more than two people, it's advisable to make it in portions. Two people maximum in, in portions. Um, if you're going to be feeding four, you do it in twice. Da -da -da. But just make sure that. In your cooking, I would so suggest um, you would just rinse out the water with a little bit of water first and put it back on the heat. Uh, okay, so we're just going to add some more oil to this. A little bit more than we did the first time. Right? Okay. Uh, are we taking the now, second this, time oh. this is where garlic comes into play. So I'm going to quickly add my chopped garlic. <laughs> And then immediately, I'm going to add my meat. Hold on, I need to bring this camera down a bit. Ugh. Okay, sorry, there's a bit of a, a door there. Immediately followed by your veggies and then your noodles. So it's garlic, veggies, noodles. Sorry? Garlic, veggies, noodles, or how, what's the order? Yeah. Yeah. 
again, just keep an eye on the, the garlic. It will turn golden almost immediately. So the moment you add your noodles, that will help stop the garlic from burning. So I'm just frying my noodles out. You want to give it a couple of, about a minute or so. Um, again, this is where you get that really nice top. Piling our noodles. So Liam, there's a question. What kind of oil does it matter? Oh, I'm just using regular cooking oil. Absolutely no problem. If you are a bit nervous about the um, garlic burning, you can actually use um, garlic infused oil as well as I see. In fact, often when you see, when you see hawker stores where they fry with garlic, the garlic beauty actually chopped up and then actually kept with some oil. So. It actually flavors the oil at the same time. You can actually use less garlic and it's less likely to burn. So now that it's in, I'm going to add my beef back in and any nice juices. Okay. Then I'm just going to pour in some salt. So I'm going to use about a couple of tablespoons for each one, maybe three at first. I'm going to use a bit more. It's quite dark. Okay. 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 So I'm just going to add, I pushed everything to the side slightly. I'm going to let my wok get a little bit hot again. And pour in just a little bit of oil. This now we're just going to fry off our eggs. Roll the oil around a bit. And then I'm going to add in my A bit of light scramble. Okay, pour it around a bit. Okay. okay, and then once it's almost set, not quite, just a, just just got a little bit of runniness left to it. That, and I'm just gonna pull over my noodles. These eggs are going to have to cook for a bit. <laughs> yeah, well, this is where Paul, this is where Paul's has gone slightly off piece. <laughs> Surprisingly, the, the eggs are cooking, though. I did not expect that. Okay. And that is it. That's mine done. Oh. Well, as you can see, with all the smoke, so that's what I've ended up with. Just a little bit just flew off. Um, oh. Ooh, nice. Okay. So now serve it up. That's a nice flavor noodle right there. Mm. There you go. Oh, it's got good. Mine's got very nice wok to it. So, then we've got our dipping sauce or our sauce that we're going to add to it. <clears throat> yeah, I think yours, because it, because you had the vinegar in the eggs, 
Lo it's, it's lot a lot saucier. More, yeah, so yeah. It's, like, it's, it's going to be a lot more, um, a lot wetter. And also, what will happen to you is your noodles are more likely to break up. Um, if you're yeah. if you stir frying with too much liquid, especially ready-made noodles, uh, uh, um, pre-dried noodles, they will tend to um, break up in smaller pieces. So you want to try to avoid as much liquid as possible. Yeah. Okay, and then we've got our dipping sauce, which I'm just going to sprinkle on top. Or you can have this on the side as well. You don't have to. You don't have to do this. Um, other thing too, you can have is some really nice chili sauce would be really good with this as well. But I just like, I just love the vinegar flavor. I think it works so well. And, oh, and one final little flourish from my side. Because I'm Malaysian, I can't, I can't not put um, dry, um, deep fry shallots on things. <laughs> and again, I quite like this because it just adds a nice little crunch to it. Um, because, like I said, it's a very silky, um, soft noodle dish. So, I just want a little bit of texture change as well. Okay. And because I can't resist a little bit more, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And there we go. That's mine. Looks good, oh, Liam. Now, of course, do I have to wait to take a picture of this so I can actually eat it? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I was going to say, I actually am running a masterclass on chocolate the other this weekend, so I was playing around with, uh, you know, blood cockles because here in Australia Ooh. you can't get decent, but get good decent yeah. blood cockles. But I managed to get some from this gentleman who brought it in specially from Vietnam, but they were expensive, a uh, 900 Gram pack cost twenty bucks plus delivery, mm -hmm. and you know it's mostly shell. The shell is heavy, and I didn't realize, but like uh, when it arrived the, on the packet, it actually says it's already cooked. So it's like fro oh. you think you're buying fresh seafood, oh well, frozen seafood, imported frozen, but no, it's actually pre cooked. But never mind. I thought like I'd use it for my chocolate there for the first time in who knows how long, and. But I also had some fresh oyster with me. And I actually mm. decided oyster tastes better in my taco deal than blood cockles, or at least compared yeah. to like pre cooked blood cockles, at least anyway. So <laughs> I, I, I think you can, you, it just adds that slight seafood flavor to it, you know, because again, they're so flavorsome. Yeah. So I think oysters, mussels, any, I, mean, like, I, I don't even remember, I use snails in mine. <laughs> oh, is that right? Well, because we can get snails very easily here, so I actually use tin snail, and it does actually just give you that little sort of chewy, salty bit when you eat it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of what you want. So, yeah, snails yeah. would be my solution. Oysters yeah, yeah. would be good too, but it would pay me to put an oyster in chakwe chow, unless it was like the world's fanciest chakwe chow. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> and Kun wants to know how it tastes, Paul. Yeah, it's not bad. So vinegary from oh, the well, market. I, I have a disclaimer. It's not tasting anything like it should do because someone didn't do what he was meant to do. <laughs> oh, well. It's a bit vinegary. I'll make another batch, I'll make another batch later. <laughs> yeah, you have to go. Let me try it. Uh, don't mess it up too much, Liam. You've got to take photos for us, remember? Talking with my mouth full. No. It, it actually looks like chocolate gel, actually. <laughs> it does. It really does taste like chocolate gel, um, but pretty straightforward to do. I must say, technically, it's what, probably a bit easier than chocolate gel, I feel. Um, but no, very nice. Very nice, nice fried meat. Good. Cool, My cheese cool. is a bit hot. <laughs> bunch of people saying thank you. Brian's had my chocolate gel when he was in Australia, and he liked it. Pauline says, thank you both chefs, Liam and Paul, for the CKTs for today's show. And he says, oh, he's eating already. Three C says, how about cucumber in chocolate? Yeah, will it work? You know what about sea cucumber? Uh, someone once mentioned that sea cucumbers are basically like um, ocean caterpillars, and I've never touched it since. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's not much about a sea cucumber that makes me want to eat it. I have to be honest. Who picked that out of the ocean and thought, hmm, this looks really good. <laughs> 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 right, so just lost, lost, the sea, lost the cucumber in the ocean and it came out looking like that <laughs> 100 years later. This blind <laughs> I okay. agree. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pauline says that looks delicious. Now I'm craving for CKT. Meg Tan earlier said yum. And Kun said looks good. And Victoria says uh, yummy. So there you go. All these compliments about these dishes. Um, looks so good. You, you can't even tell that I took a mouthful. I, I shifted everything back over. Uh, so we're good for the so uh, I can tell. <laughs> I'll be judging you silently. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Shah says, uh, Cha Kui Tia with sea urchin. Uh, you know, I've never actually had sea urchin. It seems, have, have you? No. Oh, no. no. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit of an acquired taste, though. Uh, and I, Annie I, says, I, something. I would have put sea urchin something that you actually want to eat on its own. I don't know. To me, yeah. it's very much like a satini kind of thing that you have to eat sea urchin that's. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know. I've never tasted it, so I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a new thing. Maybe we should be yeah, adding yeah, it to yeah. our chocolate Yeah. <laughs> I have made a chocolate with lobster with lobster and tobiko. You know, a tobiko is like these uh, uh, row, right? Um, mm. I did it at Trader's Hotel Kuala Lumpur for a special thing. But, yeah, that was quite fun. <laughs> it was just for the sake of trying to be, like, you know. Trying to bling it up a bit, sort of thing. You've got to try. You've got to try different things. You know, I mean, you mustn't get too bogged down. And okay, this is what Penang Chao Kuei Chao like. This is what Tiramban Chao Kuei Chao is like. This is what Patsy Yu is like. You know, you've got to play around with it in the side. And I mean, I always think, you know, hawkers. They don't all sell the same flavors and the same stuff, even though it's the same dish. Mm -hmm. They all have their own variation. So, you know, if you're cooking stuff at home, don't get too hung up on is it exactly like this person? Because no one's is exactly like that uncle's in political school. You know, it's just not going to happen. So, you know, find your own flavors, find your own way of doing it, and it's still going to be really good. So, yeah, don't be scared. I agree. I agree. Uh, Enkun says, thank you, Liam and Paul. Most enjoyable evening. Brian says he's had raw sea urchin before in the Bronx, so there you go. Uh, yeah, yes. I mean, we can yeah, yeah. Many, but I've just never felt inclined to try them. Just, no, yeah. it's always given to me. I would, uh, yeah, I wouldn't seek it yeah. out, but if someone yeah. was like, here's a sea urchin, I'd be like, yeah, cool, go for it. And so yeah. I have to compare it myself. I, I lived in, I don't know why, I, think I saw a show, a movie as a kid where someone stood in a sea urchin, and ever since then, I'm like, they're just evil. <laughs> they're just waiting to stab you in the foot. So yeah, yeah, I've never been a huge fan of them. <laughs> yeah, eating, yeah, what, yeah. eating one makes me like comeuppance for being mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I draw the line at oysters at this point. So sea urchin, something I have to work towards. Um, okay, guys. So well, thank you so much. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in again. Good to have the guys back cooking along. So uh, make sure you say hello and comment and let us know if you want to see them again soon and we will schedule them in all right and uh yeah and don't forget to sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash join today if you want this recipe we now email everyone uh recipes well i try to anyway they tend to come in big batches so i had like a whole set of nine recipes to send out the other day. I just sent one and told them, told you guys to just go to the members area to get the rest of them. All right. Uh, and he says, so pleased to see you guys cooking again. Thank you. There you go, guys. You oh, can see you have a lot. Is there? But All I right. can't believe it's our first one of the year. How is that possible? Know, what have we been, do been doing with our time? I ask you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we're going to bump out as usual with Tourism Malaysia, and we will see you again this coming Sunday. Actually, is MOMC TV. We are back with an episode which is actually vegan, okay. accidentally, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, we will see you then. Ciao, everyone. Good night. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.